David McBride, thank you very much for coming here today. You're the director of the Dryden Flight Research Center, the NASA Research Center in California. You are about to see the Solar Impulse flight. Why are you interested in this flight? Dryden's role in NASA is aeronautics research, but also science. Uh, right now we use Global Hawk unmanned aircraft. They give us about 30 hours of flight for science. It, it is essential for doing science work like uh, hurricane and, and adverse weather research that you would be able to fly for long periods of time. The solar impulse gives us much longer than than 30 hour flights and that's what really excites the scientists, being able to, to stay over uh, a scientific area of interest like a hurricane or a storm, tropical storm, or to go to the north or south pole to study ice caps and ice conditions in, in the Arctic or Antarctica. So now of course you haven't seen the, the aircraft yet but when you see it and this whole idea about the solar impulse, is this something that inspires you or that you can use in your work back in California? Absolutely. It is a, it is a capability, a, a facility, if you will, that enables science to take, uh, to do, I guess, more significant earth science research. But it's also an interest to me in, at, at NASA, at, at Dryden, in the early uh, 2000s, we flew the Helios to its record-breaking flight. It was a solar-powered aircraft uh, built by AeroVironment in California and it flew up to 196,800 feet on uh, solar electric power. So similar concept, the solar impulse has really matured the technology to the next level, made it more usable. The, the uh, Helios was really an experimental vehicle. The solar impulse is still experimental, but it takes it to a much more production ready capability, so it's more reliable. And what does it stay, uh, mean, this reliability? In the future, what, what will you imagine out of solar technology, for example? Out of solar technology for aircraft, I can imagine more reliable use, uh, being able to fly uh, higher up latitude-wise, north and south, away, closer, away from the equator where we can get so enough solar energy to fly. It also for commercial travel, for either passenger travel or commercial, it enables uh, maybe more efficient green uh, transportation, so we're not so reliant on hydrocarbon-based engines. And that's that's got has to be the way we move in the future for either small uh, general aviation aircraft or even the big transports behind me. Eventually, we move away from hydrocarbon-based fuels, and solar impulse is really on that step, that evolutionary path to getting away from hydrocarbon. So you coming from NASA, that as something has made people dream throughout the, the times who were the first to put man on the moon and so on. Um, what are you looking most forward to when, when seeing uh, the airplane today? Is there something specific that you're looking forward to? Well, looking at where the state of the art is in, in aviation, but also even for us at NASA, we look for, you know, Solar Impulse is an inspirational vehicle. It is something that is proving that you do real activities in flight in the air and, and, and have to take it beyond paper and studies and, and academic work. And Solar Impulse is, is really tied to NASA's creative and uh, value of proving things work. Actually, when we talk about putting a man on the moon, you have to really do it. Solar Impulse really puts a man in a solar-powered airplane and really makes it work. More than a paper study or a book or a concept, it's, it's real.